we all have observed a wide range of diplomatic worries um, over the last weeks prior to Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, you remember that all possible delegations on the highest levels uh, visited Kiev these days in order to find a peaceful solution, in order to pull Russia back from the brink. Unfortunately, the leadership of the Russian Federation chose the way of war and started its attack against the peaceful country, its neighboring country, which has never invaded any other sovereign state and is now fighting for its independence. We really trust in our armed forces. Um, we trust in our incredible people. Uh, their bravery is just fascinating. Um, thousands of people joined the territorial um, defense forces, so-called groups, where they help each other to defend their territories, their communities, their homes, their families. Unfortunately, Russia has blatantly violated all possible norms and principles of the international law, of the international humanitarian law, shelling on the residential areas, killing women, children, um, elderly people. We have already lost more than 350 civilians over the last five days. 16 children are among them. We can only imagine the dimension. Lots. Ambassador, uh, this is Martin. Let me quickly jump in. One of the surprising things we're into day five or day six of this invasion is that Russia has not been able to to capture the skies over Ukraine. That is uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to grab air superiority, although that's probably uh, good news for Ukraine. President Zelensky is calling for a no fly zone over Ukraine. I know that. How realistic is that? given that both the U.S. and NATO have both said no troops or no boots on the ground. This would obviously involve, if it were to be enforced by either the U.S. or NATO or a combination of both, it would involve uh, maybe not their boots on the ground, but their planes in the air. How realistic is this proposition, as welcome as it might be uh, for Ukraine? You know, at the very beginning of uh, the Russian invasion, many steps by many partners of Ukraine seemed to be unrealistic. But as we saw, and we are still facing that, the anti-war coalition of countries around Ukraine is growing, and unprecedented steps are taken in order to deter further bloodshed. We can only say that now we are at war where we only need to act and act now. Thinking about the principles or norms which could regulate it, this is something which we would do after that. The main purpose now is to save lives, to provide um, the ceasefire, or at least that the attacks on the residential areas stop. Um, of course, we see that also Russian forces uh, have uh, huge losses. Russia has already lost more than 5,000 in manpower over the last five days. And our hope is also that these numbers will be heard and seen in Russia. 